In this free video, discover three simple tricks you can apply right now that will make Dance Studio Animation up to 10 times faster, more fun and look instantly professional. Hi, I'm Will Cameron from Dreamlight, the world leader in helping new Dance Studio and live web artists love their art and income since 2005. Alright, so without further ado, let's just jump straight into trick number one, camera motion. Here we have a scene in Dance Studio with Michael Four, and I've applied an, an Annie block to him, so he is performing a kicking operation, right? Now I'm gonna move this window out of the way here and look through the camera. Now normally when people apply motion to the camera, and I see this all the time, is that the camera, bring up the normal timeline here, is that the camera looks very robotic, so to speak. So for instance, I'd start here, and at the very end, I just look like something like this. All right, so we've got a motion here defined. And as you can see, the camera is moving statically, right? It doesn't have any life on its own. So a super simple trick you can do here is to, I'm gonna just remove these these keyframes here is to first of all zoom in a little bit on the camera and second we're gonna perform a similar operation with the camera but instead of having that smooth or static motion we're gonna apply something less static kind of when you're watching movies you know the camera is shaking a little bit it's not that static it's kind of like a real camera that has some weight and you can apply the same thing here inside the studio by making it a little bit less linear. I'm not sure how to do that. So first of all, define the first point and the end point. Now, we are zooming in a little bit because when the camera is zoomed in, this kind of motion we're gonna do is, is easier visible to the viewer. So right now, we are still having just a plain motion, right? chopping off his feet here at the very bottom but now for every few frames you can readjust the camera just a little bit and don't make it so perfect but instead add a little bit of tweaks back and forth always miss him sometimes you know intentionally don't follow the, him precisely All right, keep doing keep doing keep adding those frames key frames all right so you have added a little bit of random motion to our camera right now and when we play this back right now this is how it looks it looks more like a real hollywood camera zooming in or moving in on the character that gives you instantly professional look and feel less robotic style if you will and instantly more live and vibrant camera live action all right so let's move on to trick number two fast rendering Let's face it, if you spend 10 minutes per frame per image and you've got a 30 second animation with 30 frames per second, you actually end up in almost a week in pure rendering time. So the goal is to get your rendering down to seconds per frame and not minutes per frame. Now the easiest way you can achieve this right inside the studio is to add a single light. I see many artists add a lot of lights, a lot of shadows and all that that gives a lot of extra rendering time. So just add a single light and add a distant light because these lights render the fastest, all right? Now looking through the light, we can just set it here to the side. We can also choose to have it from a little bit from behind. All right, next what you do is you set shadow and you use ray tracing. In most cases, ray tracing goes really fast because you don't need to calculate the deep shadow map for each of the frames you render. However, you need to check that because sometimes when you render hair or other objects like grass or IVs on the walls, 
deep shadow map might actually even go faster. Anyway, we're gonna use ray tracing and shadow softness 0.5. It's a good value to have on sunlight. Next, you wanna back that up because now if you if we just perform a render right now on this frame here, I'm gonna check my render settings. Let's use HD. So I'm not making anything up. This is HD quality. I'm gonna have progressive turn off. Uh, very important that you use sampling X and Y pixel samples three don't use more than that because you don't need to and it's just gonna increase your rendering time next thing you want to adjust is the shading rate keep that at one in most cases going below that down to 0.2 will increase this the crispness of textures of all the lighting and shadows however it will add to rendering time tremendously so keep it at around one for now all right, so now let's perform a render. Now I'm screen recording at the same time, so it might not be as fast as it usually goes, but here is a normal render, right? And we are rendering a single frame. You see the rendering time here on the left side. Five seconds, eight, nine, 10. All right, 14, 15 seconds. Pretty good, right? And we got decent, you know, looking lighting. However, it's kind of dark here in the back. So you want to, you know, back that up with Uber Environment. And now very important when you do that, Uber Environment is an awesome light set, but it can turn out into long, long, long render time if you are using its advanced features, especially if you are using them in conjunction with quality. So first of all, when you load it, simply click on it and resize it so it doesn't obstruct your view here. Next, what you wanna do is click on, on its light properties and here on the environment mode, you wanna use ambient only. Don't use the occlusion or indirect lighting because although they will look good, they will add to the rendering time and you wanna get below the one minute mark, preferably just a few seconds per render. So use ambient. All right, and then you can add intensity maybe around 25 or something like that. So it just adds but doesn't kill the overall lighting you have. Now on render, we are still getting the same rendering speed, right? Exactly the same rendering speed, but we have more information in the camera view so it doesn't look that empty. And you can just adjust this to your taste. So we still have 15 seconds or 14 seconds per frame, which is kind of good, right? And of course you can adjust it higher up if you prefer to have a little more lighting and the more the higher up you adjust that one you can also counter adjust the sunlight so it doesn't overpower your character if you need to all right that's it trick number three even faster rendering so we've seen times down to 15 seconds per frame which is really good now how can we increase this even more well there is one thing now remember, if you want higher quality here, if you want really, really advanced lighting, you have to go into these modes down here. When you do that, you also need to increase occlusion samples to avoid grainy effects. As you do that, you heavily increase the render time past the one minute mark. It's still a little bit grainy here and there, but it's starting to look really nice, right? You have additional information. We are right now past 15 seconds and we just 17 down with the, the render. So this is gonna take a lot more time to complete. First of all, to get more speed when you render, it's a good idea to remove the things that that studio needs to render. And if you take a look at this very render here, you see that the environment picks up almost 90% of the entire screen, right? All right, so a super simple thing you can do is to actually, I'm gonna remove the camera a new camera should you see. Next what I'm gonna do is remove the environment because that is like 90% of the rendering, right? So I'm gonna remove it. And instead, I'm gonna remove the Uber environment too. And instead I'm gonna add plain primitive. Now I'm gonna raise that off the ground, select it here, raise it off the ground. Alright, 90 and put it behind Michael. And you wanna put it behind your character in such a fashion so that when you're looking through the camera, let me just frame him here. All right, I'm 
going to be still for now. This works really well in animation as well. The trick is to place that plane behind him. So we can go in here, we scale it to match the camera proportions. All right, and then we scale the whole thing and put it behind him. So we can put it away. Turn it towards the camera. Now, before doing anything else, we can actually do the trick itself, which is to apply an image to that background. So I'm gonna go ahead here and select the plane, go to surfaces, click on the plane here, click on diffuse, click on browse. All right, and I'm gonna click on that and just open it up. Next, when you have that applied, you wanna lower the diffusion, lower glossiness, lower specularity, choose white as ambient, and increase that to 100. It's very important that's 100%. Next, once it's visible in your frame, you can easily adjust it. And we can use a tool here called Rotation, Rotate, and rotate it to face the camera. It doesn't need to be that exact. All right, next we can position it. All right, skew it a little bit like that and just adjust its scale. You can you know go a little bit over the edges doesn't really matter now this particular background is a little bit skewed in itself it has a little bit of z rotation added to it but that's okay first of all we can just make sure it really matches him and looks almost the same like in the background it's very important that the lighting matches the background okay now we can back it up with the environment quickly here I'm just gonna do a simple, simple thing. Just add it here and use 35 intensity. Again, use ambient for a quick rendering. And you can also, if you like to, in the color option here, add that very image you have added and lower saturation to 50. Before we render, we wanna check that the plane has shadow casting turned off. So go to general here. Display, cast shadows off. Now, when we render this image this time around, it's gonna go a lot faster. As you can see, it renders in three seconds flat. Three seconds flat, and looks really, really good, right? It's almost like the background is really there and matching our character. You still have freedom of, you know, zooming in the camera, moving and panning the camera within the frame, within the background's limitation, of course. And as you zoom in on, on Michael here, what you also can do is blur the background. Now let me throw in a little bit bonus here. This in itself is a time saver because if you were to do this on a real background, you zoom in and you use the camera's DOF function, which is depth of field, the blurry background you can see, right? You have to go to the camera setting, turn off that uh, depth of field and then set the focal distance to match the character. That requires, that operation with a real set, with a real background scenery, requires that you go into render settings and use here a higher value up to 10 on pixel samples. That really, really, really adds to rendering time. So this in itself, using a background with a faked blurred image and how you make that image blurry well you go into photoshop load that image into photoshop and apply a little bit of gaussian blur to it and just a tiny 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 bit not too much all right then we can just go ahead and save it underscore dof next when you go back to dash studio you can load that very image to the background itself Click on the plane, surfaces, diffuse, browse, click on open, and you've got it applied. Now when you render, you have a softer backdrop, which means you're actually using the camera DOF function without actually using it. So it's still gonna render in two seconds flat. And remember, three seconds. Remember that I'm screen recording at the same time, I'm already putting some strains on my on my system. But now you have a soft backdrop and it looks like Michael is really in there, right? Now, of course, rendering times would vary depending on your system, but this is the 
absolutely fastest way you can render inside the studio. That's it for this free video. I hope you got a lot of good value out of it. If you like what you see and would love to automate all this while keeping 100% quality, then go ahead and click the link below this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.